Glory to God. I want you to go with me right now to uh, Romans chapter 1, verse, two, verse 16. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Romans 1, 6, I love this portion of scripture. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Say believes. believes. See, we, we receive the power of the gospel by our faith. And we need to be proclaiming and preaching the gospel, the good news. And we're going to look at the gospel again. What does it really mean? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't be ashamed of Christ. If you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. Amen. I am who I am by the grace of God. I believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God who stepped out of glory, became a man, and dwelt among us. I believe He died on the cross for the sins of the whole world and for my sins, and that they took Him off the cross dead and put Him in a grave, in a tomb, dead, and on the third day He came out of that grave alive forevermore. And He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's never going to suffer again. They're not going to be able to to defeat Him again. They're never going to kill Him again. He will live forever and ever, and those who believe in Him will live with Him forever and ever. See what I believe? I believe He was born of a virgin. I believe the Word of God. But see, science in the world, and I say, that's impossible. With man it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And Dr. Egan did a good job last week. How many of y'all enjoyed Dr. Egan being here? He said we can believe the airlines, we can believe, you know, know, the the tax is going to pick you up or whatever. We believe man, but we don't believe God? Our whole world down here is is scheduled and we're we're believing what people are telling us. When you go to work, you believe that that guy's going to write you a check at the end of the week, right? Some of us, we believe it so much we spend it before we get it. You notice I didn't put that just on you. I said to some of us. This is just how we have good conversations on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> okay, let me get back on this. But faith, trust in God. R- look at this again. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to save you, to deliver you, to heal you, to set you free. That word salvation doesn't just mean going to heaven. It encompasses the total healing and restoration of your entire being, even now. It's a down payment of the Holy Spirit whenever you receive a healing now. We need to understand what He paid for when He went to the cross. Do you believe these things? Or you're ashamed to say, oh, a virgin having a baby? Well, after God moves upon the virgin, she can have a baby. Amen. And then you read the gospel, walking on water? Well, yes, if he created the water, I think he can walk on it. Amen? Amen. He created everything that's seen and the things that are not seen. It says, to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then also for the Greek. For in it, in the gospel that we believe is the righteousness of God. It says, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by what? Faith. We're supposed to be living by faith. Let me tell you, that's a word from God that we just heard when Roxanne said, we need to release our faith. God moves towards your faith. Faith is what's going to get you through. And He'll supernaturally give you faith sometimes. You can be believing for something or hoping something happens, hoping, hoping. Now, hope is a future, it's expectation. Faith brings that hope to pass. When you finally release your faith, hope becomes a reality then. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, you need to have hope, but eventually you got to get beyond hope to where your faith grabs it, and all of a sudden you believe you receive it even though you don't see it. Then you're hoping against hope, as it says in Romans 4. You're believing God, even though you don't see it, you call those things that be not as though they were, because you believe that God's going to bring it to pass, even though you don't see it. Because He's promised it. 
The just shall live by faith. Now go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 16, starting with verse 13. Now faith is so important because what it does, it grabs a hold of something that's not seen, but something that you've received from God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now st stay with me a little bit here. Because in this portion of Scripture, you're going to see faith being released in Peter. His faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something called revelation knowledge. And if you can get this today, it can change your life. This is one of the messages that totally changed my life when I became a new Christian. In fact, I was listening to teachings about this when I became a Christian. Revelation knowledge is getting knowledge from God that you don't get from natural sources. In other words, you know that Jesus is the Christ, not because I said it or just because somebody told you, but God has spoken to your heart and you heard God speak and you believe Him because God's revealing something to you. Amen. It's supernatural. It's not natural. And whenever you have this supernatural experience with God, no one can take it away from you. Amen. Now you can throw it away, but no one can talk you out of it because no one talked you into it. You heard the gospel, you believed the gospel, God revealed himself to you. God revealed to you who Jesus Christ was. Amen. And this is the first step of truly becoming a Christian and following and being part of the church. Look at verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, the ones that were with him, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who is Jesus, if I'd walk up to you? I say, Ronnie, who is Jesus? And he can tell me. Mama can tell you who Jesus is. Your daddy can tell you who Jesus is. A co-worker can tell you who Jesus is. And some people say Jesus was just a great prophet. Or Jesus was a moral teacher. But they won't say he's the son of God. Some of them don't believe he's the son of God. Some of them don't believe he's the Messiah. Who do men say that I am, he said. He's asking him. Who do, y'all hear people talking about me, y'all been with me all this time. Who do men say that I am? And so they answer him. This is what everybody's saying about Jesus at the time. And they said, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. In other words, they realized that even though these guys had physically died, that they were still spiritually alive. So these people still believed in the resurrection, Amen. They believed in that there was life after and said, Jesus is one of these old prophets, come back. But then he asked him this question, and every one of you is going to have to answer this question. Amen. I believe when you're going to stand before God on that day of judgment, he's going to say, who do you say that I am? Right. He ain't going to say, who does somebody else? He's not going to who do men say that I am? Nope. You can answer that. See, if you've been in religion, you can say, well, the Baptists say he's this. The Catholics say he's that. The Pentecostals say he's this. No, who do you say that he is? Yes, do you know him? Yes. And so he said, some say Jeremiah and one of the prophets in verse 15. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now let's get something straight. When he says you're the Christ, he's saying you're the Messiah. The word Christ and Messiah is the same word. Yes. In the New Testament, they translated Christ. In the Old Testament, they translated Messiah. It's the same word. Yes. has the same meaning. You are the Messiah. The one that we've been waiting for all this time. You are the Son of the living God. Guess what? Right answer. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's the right answer. Now, don't say it just because I say it, because you're going to be saying what Mark said. But Peter gets this revelation from the Father. Amen. In other words, he's around Jesus, but he's still communicating with the invisible God. Even though the visible God is right there with him, he's still communicating with the invisible God, just like you and I do every day, like we should be. So he says this, he says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 17, listen. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Bar Jonah, that's what it means. That means son of Jonah. 
For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In other words, Peter had been walking with Jesus, seeing Jesus' flesh and blood, seeing Him do the miracles, seeing all the signs and wonders and everything taking place, listening to Jesus teach, but He's saying, flesh and blood, you didn't learn this by what you saw. Or what you, you didn't learn this from flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. I pray, Father in heaven, reveal to this congregation, reveal to everyone on television, reveal it to everyone in central Louisiana that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the answer. And only God can do that. Church, we need to be praying that people's eyes will be open, that they can get revelation knowledge of who Jesus is. Because when you have revelation knowledge, no one can take it away from you. Somebody was sharing the gospel with me. In fact, Chip Johnson was sharing the gospel with me. And we was working together at that time. He was working for us uh, with Tony and uh, the, the school picture business and all that, traveling. And he brought these tapes, and I was listening to these tapes about Jesus and the blood covenant and revelation knowledge. And then one day, I just, it just hit me. Man, this is true. This is real. I've been hearing about Jesus all my life, but all of a sudden it became alive. It became real. It's like he was right there with me and he was wanting to save me. And he said, I'll wash away all of your sin and let you have a new life. You can be born again and start your life over and your slate between me and you is going to be wiped clean. I'll throw all your sin into the sea of forgetfulness. Now, let me tell you, you can't do that. God does that. Some of y'all are trying to bury your sin and hide your sin and hide your guilt. You can't do that. It's going to come back up like a zombie. That old nature is going to come back up and chase you. But God is not holding your trespasses against you. So we got to believe upon God. And treat ourselves the way God would treat us. And be free. Wow. Mary Magdalene served Jesus. And she was the woman that had seven demons when she met Jesus. I mean, some people come to church. I'm like, wow. Lord, we're going to have to... Pray her through. Pray him through. But yes, you know what? We continue to mature a year later, two years later, three years later, five years later. They're preaching the gospel. They're sharing the gospel. At the ladies' prison yesterday, uh, Christy and, and Flo went there. They went, to they went to preach and they was going to baptize one person. They end up baptizing eight people. Amen. And when I saw them right after that, it looked like Moses came off the mountain. They were glowing with glory. I couldn't tell which one was white or black. Come on, guys. I'm not righteous. I'm just having fun. Say, I love my pastor. Amen. But see, God can change us. Isn't that amazing? Has God changed anybody in here? Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. So flesh and blood is not going to reveal Jesus Christ to you. You've got to start looking towards the Father in heaven and asking Him to reveal Jesus to you, and He'll give you revelation knowledge of who Jesus is. And when that gets in your heart, the gates of hell cannot prevail against that. Satan cannot steal that out of your heart. And that's what he's talking about here. That's why we go to the next scripture. It says this, And I also say to you, Peter, and let me tell you, Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter. So he says, I want to say to you, little pebble, that's what it means, Peter means pebble, rock, small rock. He says, and I say to you, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. Let me tell you all something, guys. The rock is not Peter. Peter is a little rock built upon the massive rock of Jesus Christ. The rock that the church is built upon is the revelation of who Jesus Christ is by my Father who is in heaven. When you have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, He becomes the rock, the foundation of your life. And you become a living stone. First Peter talks about it. That is built upon the massive foundational rock of Jesus Christ. We build a habitation for the dwelling of God. We become the church because we're little rocks built upon the massive rock. This is not the church. This is called a church building. You are the church. You are the place where God dwells. 
So what he's saying right here, he says, and upon this revelation of who I am that you got from the Father in heaven, that rock, I will build my church. In fact, that's how you get born again. You're not part of the church until you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not believe it because somebody talked you into it, but because you've prayed to your Father in heaven, and your Father in heaven has revealed to you who Jesus Christ is. Whenever I minister to people who call themselves atheists, and I have a good talk with them, I tell them this. I said, I'm not trying to talk you into believing in Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is God, and he's, if He is really God, He's big enough to reveal Himself to you Himself. So why don't you pray to the Father, God in heaven, and ask Him, if Jesus is real, reveal Him to me. Wow! Guess what happens? All of a sudden, they're not listening to Mark talk anymore. They're praying to a God they don't believe in to ask Himself to reveal themselves to him, and guess what happens? Revelation knowledge will come into that room, and all of a sudden, the person who claimed they never believed in God is talking to God, and God is now revealing himself to them in a supernatural way. And guess what happens to some of these atheists? They've become some of the best Christians you'll ever meet. Amen. You know why? Because flesh and blood didn't reveal it to them, but our Father, who is in heaven, revealed it to them. How many of you know that God revealed to you who Christ was? Not just a church, not just some... Come on, it's Him. He's real, He's alive, and He's big enough to reveal Himself to everyone that will ask Him. And that's why He says, and, and He says, and guess what? The gates of hell, all of hell, cannot steal this revelation from you. I mean, isn't it awesome? He says, upon this rock, I, say I, that's Jesus talking. Is it red letter, if you have a red letter box? Is that Jesus talking? Amen. Who's building the church? Pastor Mark? No. So people say, oh, the church is a mess. Well, blame it on Jesus. He's the one building it. <laughs> no, we got a mess in church, but the church is still here to do a work for God. Amen. Amen. Amen? And we need to get out there and be the ambassadors he's called us to be in the power representing the king and the kingdom like we're supposed to. And so he says, when you get this revelation, the, the devil, the gates of hell, the power of hell, the authority of hell cannot prevail. It cannot win against you. And then he says, not only that, but because you get this revelation, look at the next scripture. Turn to David and say, it gets better. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say, I've got the keys. See, some of y'all don't believe you got the keys. Come on, somebody release your faith right now and believe I got the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Oh, yeah, but you see, religion taught us that's just for Peter. No, that's for everyone that believes he's the Christ by revelation Amen. knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Yes. Amen. Now, there's no doubt that Peter was a special guy. Amen? All the apostles were special people. Amen? All of the major doctrines in the book of Acts came through the apostle Peter. Amen. He preached the first message. First people got born again. He baptized them. He started home meetings. He did disciplinary action. Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead because they didn't do what they were supposed to. So he did all those. He healed. He was there at the gate and the guy was healed through the ministry of Peter. He preached to the Sanhedrin. He goes to the Gentiles. The Gentiles get full of the Holy Spirit. So Peter's a significant person, no doubt about it. But the same, God's no respect of, of people. When you get the same revelation Peter had, you can do the same things Peter did. Jesus actually said, and, and uh, Dr. Egan used the scripture last week, he said, the works that I do you will do also, and greater works than these you'll do because I go to my Father. Amen. Jesus said we're going to do the works he did. He said, I'm going to go away. And the first one he did it through was Peter. So he was the example. You know why? Because he had the revelation of who Jesus was. And he goofed up too. After this... He goes to Jesus, and Jesus said, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and be crucified in the same chapter. And he turns to Peter. Peter says, no, you're not, you're not. And he turns to me and says, get behind me, Satan. Wow, he just had a revelation. And then right here it says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. He's got the keys, and he's not using the keys right because he's not warning the Lord to go suffer and die when it was God's plan for him to suffer and die. And he says, you're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. When you're more mindful of the things of man than the things of God, that's Satan working in your thinking. Wow. You read this chapter, you'll get it. So listen, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatever you bond on earth will be bound in heaven. 
Hmm. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Man, we have some authority, huh? So why, why aren't we uh, speaking the word? Why aren't we doing some binding and loosening? Hey, Amen. I loose the Holy Spirit on y'all today. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to everyone. Reveal him to us even more. I want more revelation of who he is. The more I see him, the more I'm going to love him, and I'm going to be changed into his very image of who he is. I'll represent him like he wants me to represent him. Amen? Amen. Say, I believe. believe. Come on, release your faith. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe believe he died on the cross for my sin. That he was buried. And that God raised him from the dead. He's alive. And he's my Lord. And he's my Savior. I'm free in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Now come on. We hear that over and over, but that's the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That is where the power of God is, right there. Because the same faith it took for you to believe upon him to be saved, to be born again, is the same faith you need. If you need a healing in your body, you need to believe upon the Lord Jesus with the same same faith. Do you think you deserve to go to heaven? No. He came to you because he loved you and gave you the gift of eternal life. Do you think you deserve to be healed? No, but he died. He went to a whipping post and took stripes upon his back that by those stripes you're healed. And it's a gift that he wants to give you if you believe upon it. Well, why don't you just just go ahead and believe right now you're healed. Go ahead and believe you're healed. Believe it. Receive it. All of a sudden... When, 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 when your face starts jumping in your head and you start thinking, that's not faith. Faith is in the heart, not the head. We live so much by our heads and our phones because some of our heads don't work anymore. We've got to have Siri or your phone to tell you everything. How many inches in a foot? I don't know. Ask the phone. Phone, how many inches in a foot? <laughs> Twelve. We ought to pray about this year. You know how everybody fasted the first of the year? For the first 21 days of of this coming year, let's all put up our phones. Somebody, oh my God, I won't be able to live. (laughs) It's not like you're frying eggs on that thing. I don't know where that came from. Amen. Amen. You ought to see. You know, you take a trip, you get in the elevator with three people, they're all looking at their phone. They say, my wrist hurts. I wonder why. (laughs) Oh, help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 8. Time flies, amen. Oh, God. We're almost time to stop. If I stop, y'all going to come back next week and hear some more? All right. Good. Let's look at verse 4, 1 Peter 2, 4. Coming to Him. Who, who are we coming to? Christianity is following Jesus. Coming to Him. As to a living stone, rejected by men, He came to His own and His own did not receive Him. John 1 tells us that. Rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious. And you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. He is that living stone, and we are living stones built upon Him. The church is not brick. It's stones. You know the difference between brick and stones? Man makes bricks. God makes stones. Amen? And, and so when, when builders build with stones, it's got that God. See, the altars were made of stone in the Old Testament, not bricks. The Tower of Babel was made of bricks, and God tore it down. Because it was a man-made thing. Some of y'all know that. And uh, look at verse 6. Therefore it is also contained in the Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion, Zion a chief cornerstone. Say chief cornerstone. That's the foundation, that's the chief corner, everything is measured off of him. That's what a cornerstone is. Elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. You want to get rid of your shame? Believe upon Jesus Christ and build your life on him and him alone. 
He's the measuring stick. He's the foundation. Therefore, to you who believe, He is precious. Is He precious to y'all? He's precious to me. I love the Lord. Amen? But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. You'll fall over him if you don't believe in him. Amen? Amen. But if you believe in him, you're going to be built upon him. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, so many scriptures. Y'all going to give me a little bit more? A little more time? Y'all can take in a little bit more? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. So the building is people, isn't it? Listen to what he says. According to the grace of God, and that's so awesome, the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and others build, and, and, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds. Now look at verse 11. Put it right up there. Everybody look at this. For no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. Who's the foundation? Upon what rock are we going to build a church? Jesus Christ. But we are little rocks built upon the massive rock of who Jesus Christ is. And when we build on that rock, this, this right here, this portion of Scripture is so great. He says, now if anyone builds on this foundation... With gold, silver, precious stones, it says wood, hay, or straw, each one's works will be manifest, for the day will declare it, and he's talking about the day of judgment, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's works of what sort it is. So works are important after salvation. Once you have built upon the massive rock of Jesus Christ, what you're building on Him is either going to endure the test or is going to Fail the test. But at least you're still on the rock. Y'all need to see this in the scripture. Just because somebody built with wood, hay, and stubble doesn't mean they don't go to heaven. You're just not building, you won't have much rewards. So he's talking about works don't save us, but after we're saved, we're supposed to be doing good works. Y'all see that? Look at verse 14. For if anyone's works which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. I want a reward. How about you? Amen. That's because I'm going to build on, on the rock of Jesus Christ something that's going to endure. But look, look at this next scripture. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. Say suffer loss. But look at this good news. But he himself will be saved. Yet through fire. Get that. So works doesn't save us. Works is about rewards. Yeah. Believing on Him, when you, you say, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. You're a living stone built upon the massive rock of Jesus. Yeah. He's the foundation of your life. And then the works you do are built upon that same rock. Yeah. And if it's good works, it endures, and you get a reward. If it's bad works, guess what? It's going to be burned up. And you're going to suffer loss of your rewards, but guess what? you yourself will still enter into the kingdom. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that good news? I'm not ashamed of the gospel to tell you, you know what? He loves you so much. You're going to be amazed who you're going to see in heaven. And you're going to be amazed who's not going to be there. God judges on a different way than we do. That's why I said people say that they, they can judge. No, they, they might can rebuke me or correct me, but they can't judge me. He's the judge. Amen? 